easier report on the options of the uh, your opinion, I should say, on the proper notice. Board of Supervisors December 19th meeting notice and agenda was posted in the government center building in two places, posted on the county website on December 11th, 2023, and was published in a legal newspaper the week of December 11th. In addition, on Monday, December 11th, 2023, at 5.51 p.m., the Office of the County Clerk distributed copies of such notice and meeting to supervisors and media via email or mail. Councilor? That complies with the open meetings off. Roll call, please. Brad Olson? Doug Rowdy? Here. Steve Warndahl? Here. Ryan Wood? Here. Tracy LeBlanc? Here. Dan Ruck? Here. Barbara McAfee? Here. Jeremy Hall? Kim O'Connell? Here. Amy Middleton? Here. Jay Luke? Here. Denise Lallier Prey? Here. Russ Arcand? Here. CJ Simonis? Here. And John Bonaprice? Here. 13 out of 15. Okay, would you please? I mean the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Your motion here on the agenda. <laughs> to approval with oh, the agenda. John. Give you a second, would you? Don't jump on that so fast, please. Okay. I would like to do to approve the agenda by taking resolution 4823 off. Uh, it did not go through a uh, committee yet. And uh, Mr. Olson wants to change some of the language then, as long as it hasn't been through. So to I would uh, to approve the agenda with 9A removed. I will second that. We have a second. Any any discussion in reference to that or all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, resolution 4823 is removed from the agenda. With that removal, I need a motion or I mean a vote on the agenda as amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, we have the matters offered for adoption on consent agenda. Any motion on that? A motion to approve. I'll second it. Motion made and seconded to approve uh, the consent agenda. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Public comments. Do we have any public comments? <coughs> no public comments, hearing none. We'll move on to presentations. Uh, this presentation, we have Helen Swanson and Lisa Lavasser from Community Services. They did this presentation at um, HHS committee, was very well done and stuff. I thought it was appropriate to hear have the full board hear the presentation. So I'll okay. turn it over to Lisa and Helen. Thank you very much for the opportunity for us to talk with you this evening. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. So just kind of an overview of what I think you want to touch on tonight. Um, talking about the county board priorities and how those relate to what we're doing in CFC. Um, talk a little bit about harm reduction. What is it? What is it not? And then we want to talk about what kind of work is being done in Polk County regarding prevention of substance use, treatment, and recovery. So first for the county board priorities, um, the two focuses that we have primarily in CC is the increasing public safety and reducing substance use. Um, so one of the things that I think we really hope you walk away with tonight is the importance, the value that comes with working collaboratively across departments within the county, healthcare providers, um, other recovery community members um, and stakeholders to be able to reduce the substance use that's in Polk County. No one of us is able to do that on our own. And so in order to make, make a change in moving that needle, we need to do that together. 
first I just want to talk a little bit about what is the broad de general definition of harm reduction. So according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, harm reduction is any behavior or strategy that helps reduce risk or harm to self or others. So some of the common harm reduction strategies that we're all familiar with already are things like seatbelts, sunscreen, helmets, condoms, and even like the designated driver program. And then um, if we're looking specifically at harm reduction as it pertains to substance use disorders and treatment and recovery, um, we look at SAMHSA. So SAMHSA is the federal expert in substance treatment and recovery. So that's kind of how they guide our work locally. So SAMHSA stands for Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. And they say harm reduction is an evidence-based approach that is critical to engaging with people who use drugs and equipping them with life-saving tools and information to create positive change in their lives, potentially saving their lives. So harm reduction is present across the continuum of care for substance use disorders. So harm reduction is present in prevention strategies, it's prevent, um, present in treatment strategies, and harm reduction is present in recovery strategies also. So kind of again, bringing back to focus the county board priorities. Um, so harm reduction strategies do not attempt to minimize or, or ignore uh, the harm that endangers that are associated with drug use. Um, however, it, it acknowledges that illicit drug use and substance use exists in our world um, and we're not, it's not about extinguishing it. Um, so fentanyl test strips are one of many evidence-based products that are used um, in harm reduction. Harm reduction is used widely across the United States um, and other countries around the world. Um, it does require federal, state, and local collaborations. And at this point, 40 states have decriminalized fentanyl test strips. So let's just take a look at Wisconsin in specific. So on March 25th of 2022, Wisconsin passed legislation decriminalizing the fentanyl test strips. Uh, several Wisconsin lobbying groups were in support of Senate Bill 600, and we have in our table, you could see that, and they included law enforcement organizations, health professionals, as well as government entities. So again, harm reduction is a practical approach that incorporates community-driven public health strategies around the continuum, across the continuum of care, prevention, treatment, and recovery. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into each one of those um, areas, prevention, treatment, and recovery, and talk about what is being done in Fulton County. Um, so in prevention, public health belongs to the Northwoods Coalition, which is a regional substance use prevention coalition. Um, Marshfield headquarters it. We also have the Drug-Free Communities Grant, um, which addresses reducing substance use in youth grades six through 12. So within this grant, we're working on a community coalition and an action group. So that includes school districts, faith-based communities, youth serving organizations, um, along with other nonprofits and the county. Um, within this drug-free communities grant, we've done alcohol compliance checks. We have a hidden in plain sight display, which is a traveling display. Um, we've gone to, um, varsity sporting events, parent-teacher conferences, other community health fairs and events. And it's a setup that shows how drugs, substances can be hidden um, and kind of gives adults what to look for. We also have um, small talks and real talks campaign. So that's a statewide campaign. Small talks um, gives parents pointers on how to start the discussion about alcohol with their young kids. And real talks is a campaign for anybody to start the topic conversation about um, substance use. We also um, have the Talk the Hear You campaign, which is another SAMHSA one, um, and we're playing that on gas station TVs. Uh, Public Health also has the Western Wisconsin Tobacco Free Alliance. Um, so this is a seven county alliance that focuses on um, nicotine prevention, cessation, and diversion. So every year um, our workers create an evidence-based packet that goes out to schools with a variety of different grants and different programming that would look at prevention, cessation, diversion options for nicotine use. Um, Catch My Breath is a prevention program for youth and we have trained facilitators on how to teach that program. And we've also taught school dist districts and we're administrating that. And we're just starting to put together quit kits. So specifically for <coughs> pregnant and um, but postpartum adults. 
And then we're looking to expand that for youth and other adults too. So that includes um, cessation resources for smoking and also other self-care and local resources to help folks quit smoking. We also do tobacco compliance checks with the Western Wisconsin Tobacco Free Alliance. Um, we were part of the dental pain protocol, which is a collaboration between Fulton Barron County and two hospitals. So the goal is to assist individuals that present to the emergency room department with dental pain and prescribed opioids. We're connecting them to an emergency dental appointment. And then if we look at the harm reduction pieces of it that's embedded with this <coughs> work is our Narcan direct program. So Narcan, Narcan is that opioid reversal medication. Uh, public health is trained to train others on how to administer that. And also we're able to provide kits, Narcan kits at no cost to any community members. So I believe in the last year, we've given out like 317 of those kits and trained even more folks. Um, fentanyl test strips, never use a lone hotline. And then also we're focused on safe medication storage and disposal. So we've given out I think, 1,300 to drug deactivation bags. It's this bag that you put your medication in, add water, shake it up, and then it deactivates it. Um, we also have let medication lock boxes that we are distributing across the county so people can store the medications appropriately. And then we're encouraging the use of the prescription drop box locations that we already have in the county. That's just some of the prevention work that's being done. Let's talk a little bit about the treatment that's happening here in Polk County. So as you know, Polk County Behavioral Health is what is called a DHS 75 <coughs> certified clinic, which is uh, DHS 75 is the statutory um, guidance that we have for substance use um, in the health services. Um, DHS 75 was rewritten um, and was enacted in October of 22, I believe. And a part of that <coughs> right included any individual who works in a DHS 75 clinic, including any support staff, um, is required to have Narcan training. And the purpose for that is if an individual comes into the door for an appointment, we can recognize those signs um, of an overdose and be able to help them. So not only are all of our CSD staff trained, um, but we also have all been given our kits. So we have them on us, we have them at the office. We have them in some of our fleet vehicles for our folks who are in the um, field as well. Um, in the clinic, we provide outpatient assessment and treatment. We also provide um, mental health uh, treatment. We have a psychiatrist that's in two days a week, and he is also uh, providing services at the Polk County Jail um, a half day every other week. Um, and one of the things, the harm reduction medication we use um, quite a bit there, as well as some on the outpatient basis, is called Vivitrol. And Vivitrol is a medication that's used for individuals who are um, addicted to alcohol. So it reduces their cravings and their need for alcohol. Um, like I said, we all also provide those services in the jail. We have mental health and substance use crisis staff um, that are on here every day, uh, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, and then we partner uh, for after hours coverage. We have a program that is uh, primarily geared toward individuals who have uh, mental health and or substance use and have struggled with you know, the usual outpatient services. So that program is called Comprehensive Community Services. And then uh, we are our county's OWI, which is Operating While Intoxicated, uh, driver program assessor. So we provide that assessment and then we also provide the alternative education that goes with that. So um, other organizations in Polk County programs for change is um, uh, at the Amory Behavioral Health and they provide an <coughs> outpatient program there. Uh, North Lakes Community Clinic does outpatient Whole Life Services provides outpatient and intensive outpatient. St. Croix Health provides outpatient substance use. We have a number of um, self-help groups like AA, NA, Al-Anon, and we're working on getting an Alateen up and running. So that's pretty exciting. We just had conversations last week about that. Um, and then of course our partners with the CJCC, you know, with their diversion programs, they also treatment course. We work with friends. Do we yeah, yeah. <laughs> Helen's gonna pronounce this because I can never get it right. <laughs> Angie Bimadizowit Healing Center. So that is the healing center that is owned by the St. Croix tribe and it's over in the Turtle area. And they have a number of programs um, that they are getting up and running, including um, withdrawal, residential care, and we're actually just got them set up to come and meet with uh, CSD as for a lunch and learn so we can learn more about the programs that they have. 
There's also a partnership that we have, Behavioral Health has with, we support recovery, um, and it's called uh, Chess Health. And Chess Health is an organization that has created what they call an evidence-based recovery, e-recovery program. So it's like an app on your phone, right? So we are partnering with We Support Recovery, and we're trying to pull in Burnett County and St. Croix County to put some money into this as well through our substance abuse block grant funds. Um, to provide 24-7 ability for people who are in recovery to contact this app. They can call, they can text, they can um, uh, do peer support so they can get a hold of somebody who is a peer who's gone through things that they've gone through to try to connect. It's really a unique opportunity for us, so we're, we're hopeful. Um, and then kind of back to that harm reduction piece again, um, in the treatment area, harm reduction includes the Narcan Direct program, making sure that we have staff who are trained and can help people who might be in an order situation. Fentanyl test strips, never lose, use a loan hotline. And again, that drug disposal and um, safety with the doTERRA bags, medication lock boxes, as well as uh, recommending our consumers use the prescription drop boxes if they're no longer taking these medications. All right, recovery. Um, so we all we uh, partnered with We Support Recovery, the Mental Health Task Force, we as in um, and used some substance abuse prevention dollars to have pro sober pro social events. Um, so they coordinate, and we kind of help with that. A couple of things that we've done in over the last few years is we uh, sponsor a tubing event up at Tollhagen. I want to say last year it was somewhere around 70 people that we paid for their ability to go tubing. And again, it's pro-sober, pro-social. It's open to anybody in Polk County. Um, we also partnered with them to do a kayak and canoe trip in the summertime. Um, and then we also have participated with the Mental Health Task Force on their Hope and Healing event, which falls in uh, September, which is National Recovery Month. Uh, we just started sponsoring earlier this year what are called Recovering Together Cafes. That is really a large partnership, um, but it is an opportunity for individuals who are in recovery to facilitate with other trained facilitators um, meetings where they can talk about issues that they're experiencing maybe within their recovery that everybody has kind of going on. Um, we have a number of community members who are facilitators for that. We pay for these folks to get trained as well. Um, and they occur every month. We provide childcare. So we do that here in our connections room. So the people could come in and leave their kids in a safe place. They can go and do their um, two hour recovery together cafe. And it's any kind of recovery too. Any kind not of recovery, not just substance use, use. It's anything. Trauma. Yep, exactly. Um, Partners in Recovery um, is also a community coalition. Um, we do a lot of work with them with you know sharing research, um, and one of the, a couple of those are like the, the doTERRA bags and distributing those as well as the lock boxes. I talked about chest health a little bit, but again, that is that um, e-recovery app. And so individuals who are in recovery are able to use that to their benefit. We also have several recovery residences here in Polk County. Uh, we have Angel Hands, Butterfly House, and Ob Onyx Sober Living. Uh, again, those recovery self-help groups, AANA, Elena, and our team. There are uh, recovery coaches that are employed um, through We Support Recovery via a program <coughs> through AmeriCorps, which is uh, administered by the um, Marshfield Clinic. Um, they also have some peer support specialists. And again, those are individuals who have lived experience that can connect <coughs> with somebody who might be having a difficult time. There are also recovery retreats. Um, one is the Came to Believe retreat that's in Crystal Lake, or excuse me, in Clear Lake, and then a spiritual uh, program retreat down the Emory. Shelter agencies, Northwoods Homeless Shelter, Salvation Army, um, there, and there's a number of faith-based recovery um, programs or support groups as well. And again, harm reduction falls into that as it relates to Narcan Direct, making sure that people know how to use that, training the community so that they are able to save lives. Um, Fentanyl test strips uh, we're working on, uh, never use a loan hotline, the doTERRA bags, the medication lock boxes, as well as the prescription drug boxes. In conclusion, um, 
substance use is a very, very, very complex, massive topic. So if you really want to move that needle and see meaningful change, um, especially in the county board priorities too, of increasing public safety, reducing substance abuse, that it's going to take a huge collaboration um, and involvement across not only full county departments, but also the community partners too. So our nonprofit groups, our recovery groups, our treatment groups, our healthcare, everybody kind of working together to do their piece. And again, you know, harm reduction is, is a strategy that's, that does not attempt to minimize the dangers of illicit drug use. The goal is not extinction, um, but it's to reduce the harm consequences of drug use and then save those lives in our community. There are some additional um, documents to your packet um, that include like drugs to watch for in 2004. Um, and then just some other interesting um, research data that we were able to um, find and just thought it might be important to kind of put all the pieces together for you. Hmm. Questions? <clears throat> I got one. Go ahead. Uh, the Narcan Direct Program. Do you train your local fire departments, first responders then to... Uh, Drug if, if requested. You certainly can. Yes. And and what's the shelf life? Two years. Of one of those kits. Two years. Two years. So if um, we've done with other organizations, like some school districts, they sign an MOU with us. So then we're kind of like they're an Arcan dealer. So we can always <laughs> like supply them. Like if they run out, if kids get lost, if they use kits, if um, two years are up and they expire, we can automatically kind of fill that need too. So a lot of public organizations like schools, even us, we we keep them uh, near our AD units. So that they're all kind of in that one same place, so that whoever has access to those ADDs is also able to get to know the kids. Would you say that's partly why it's hard to track like the successful uses of Narcan is because a lot of times then when they request a refill, it's because of expiration. Well, we ask that question, right? Was it was used? If it, it was, was lost, lost? If damaged, it was yeah. um, expired? And. So, Honestly, our program is new enough. We haven't had too many requests to, but there's also other places to get Narcan in the community too. So you can get it at pharmacies and other places. So it's hard to, we're not, there's other um, agencies in Polk County. We support recovery is also part of the Narcan Direct too. So it can be coming in many. So it isn't all housed directly just through us. Question. Um, you had indicated um, during the HSS meeting that um, you are uh, tracking um, Narcan use with the EMTs. Can you please share that important information? Yes, that's on your supplemental slide. <clears throat> Thank you. So it's it's hard for well public health needs we're only tracking, but we know we're not capturing all the Narcan within our community. So this is data that the state of Wisconsin is pulling together. Um, so the slide specifically looks at January through October 2023. Um, and it, so it's suspected overdose dose cases by ambulance runs. So again, it's just suspected, um, not necessarily 100% confirmed. Um, so what you see up there, Polk, Polk is the county, Western region, and Wisconsin is the region, and then Wisconsin. So year to date <clears throat> through October, um, there's been 18 suspected overdose cases that the EMS has um, assisted with and 20 Narcan doses administered. It's not uncommon for an overdose to require more than one dose of Narcan as well. So and this would not necessarily reflect any doses, family members or citizens. So, can, or so, piece of the so can, can we safely assume, assume that 18 lives were either saved or potentially saved and maybe one or two needed that, that extra dose? Is that, I mean, that's the way I read it. I would say potentially saved. I, I'm not sure what outcomes on this, but just that they responded. Can you talk about that um, new vending machine that the tribes and what they're distributing? I think that's kind of interesting. Sure. Um, the St. Croix tribe has received funding and have put up, I believe, three harm reduction, public health harm reduction vending machines. So one is in Round Lake community. Within those vending machines, I think there's about 10 different harm reduction items. So pregnancy tests, STI tests, um, Zotera bags, gun locks, Narcan, fentanyl test strips. I think some like CPR stuff also. 
Um, and I believe the process is all you have to do is be a, um, affiliated with a tribe you call and you can get a pin, put your pin number in and then you can get whatever supplies you need. So there's no, it's 24 seven, easy access. Any other I, believe, questions? I believe they also include some ceremonial stuff like sage and mm -hmm. so it's, it's both health, physical health, but also addressing uh, spiritual health as well. Yes, and there's also there's local resources here to all that information too. So um, public health, we supplied some pregnancy tests, some Narcan, some Deterra bags. So we already have our information there too. So if they need reproductive health, this is where you follow up for other recovery resources too. Any other questions? I got one. Go ahead. So most of this is after the fact. I mean, the prevention doesn't seem to be there as much. I mean, do you help the police? Do we turn people in? Do we actually arrest dealers and things like that to slow this whole process down? We wouldn't have the legal ability to arrest people. Um, Can you turn them in? I mean, we're, we're you're you're, so you're letting people, <laughs> but you're letting people that's illicit true. drugs. I mean, that's kind of a scary deal. But it just keeps going on. Then, right. I mean, can we stop it somehow? Can we slow it down? Well, we if you know somebody dealing drugs, can you can you do something? We can't even stop people from selling booze to kids that are under twenty one. We know that, yeah. So, but I mean, that's that's what I said. We got to do. We need do, do the police need more help too? Then. But you have to think about it. If folks that come to public health and behavioral health or recovery services were then turned into the police, no one would go and right. yeah. get recovery. Right. Correct. Right. But I mean, right. so, but if they walk in with drugs and do right. stuff, and if they're, if I mean, I just, I, I'm just, I'm just scared them. of this. You call a friend to have to do drugs with. Do you call your drug dealer and he comes and sells you more? I mean, the sheriff will arrest the people in our parking lot selling drugs. It's, it's kind of multi-department. <laughs> you're fighting um, substance abuse and that, you know, you're fighting it on two different ends. You know, you've got our law enforcement team that deals with the really dark side of this stuff. And then we have public health and behavior health that deal with trying to get the recovery side of it and those that want help and want to get through it. So yeah. it's kind of a multifaceted force, you know. Um, the sheriff deals with a, a whole other side of the the issue of drugs and what it does and uh, the harm that does the public safety. So it's kind of two different fronts as they try to combat kind of like the same uh, goal. Ultimately, go ahead. Go ahead, good question. Okay, so um, something that I've been thinking about is um, is how, uh, how we've failed so badly uh, throughout the years probably as far back as the war against drugs. Um, is, it, is it wise to go after, to, to let, the, let the dealer go to get the bigger fish? Or would it be better to go after the little fish and remove, remove that from the equation, right? <laughs> go for the dealers. And once the dealers are all gone, now what's the option? I mean, I, it, we live with this, we live with this substance abuse everywhere. When I worked at a company in town that had a Hoover law, used to set up lines in the bathroom and people would find them. And we put in a call to 911 for white powder and 911, the cops would come and say, we're not touching it. Could be cofentanil, could kill us all. Because you saw that picture here on the... Sorry. I know. There's that picture. There. The picture. There's a picture here of yeah, this one right here. Look at this. The little tiny teeny weeny bit of powder on there. And fentanyl's coming in everything, man. It's it's everything. I think back to when I was a kid and doing stupid stuff. I mean, thank God all we had to worry about was Paraquat in our pot. Uh, the generation before me was, don't be careful for the brown acid. The generation before that was like, 
whipped up on heroin. Uh, beer. So, I mean, it, and beer. <laughs> your generation was beer, beer and bootleg. I mean, it's in it's in the neighborhood, right? It could be in your house. The tools, I, there's not enough tools. So if 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 I would have had fentanyl test strips at that company. I could I could have tested that for, for for sure to make sure that I wasn't coming in all gounded up with the hazmat suit and wet everything down and put bleach everywhere and sanitize the whole flipping place just because it could be cofentanyl. It could be fentanyl. Anyway, that's my it's the most I've talked in six weeks. So I thank you. <laughs> I don't apologize and say saving it. Anybody else have anything? Well, that should do it. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Move on to proposed resolutions. Move on resolution 4923, ratify the labor agreement. Uh, anybody want to move on that? Move to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve. 4923, any questions or comments in reference to that? Hearing none, we'll all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Or same sign. <coughs> Resolution 5023, ratify labor for WPBA. Field services motion motion <laughs> to approve as presented. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Now we have a motion on the, uh, or discussion, possible action. The, uh, Steve, why don't you, I went to this meeting where this MOU was, was signed and ratified by the, uh, by the whole group. And I want Steve, and Amy, they did an admirable job of presenting our side of, of our position, so to speak, in reference to the MOU that was presented. And uh, we, they got the message across. I, if you want to elaborate, Steve, on. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is it. It's been signed by them. It's been signed by Mo. Uh, a lot of homework, a lot of thought. We're going to do a minimal change. When their new negotiation team came on, which we're not not really authorized to negotiate with them, but, but you know there were some minor changes, and we just brought them forward. We didn't negotiate with them per se. So we're at the point now where the MOU states that we will begin negotiations on the grandstand issue, and I think we should have representatives from their group at our next. Our, uh, executive board just open the open the topic don't do no negotiations just say okay what do, what do we want here okay so at least we all know what we're looking for what they're looking for what we're looking for and then the negotiations will begin again on where we're at with that who's going to pay what and sort so uh what I'm looking for from the county board on this is a unanimous approval. I think it's important that we start off on the right foot after all this work. Good faith. So, yeah, oh, do you have anything faith. to add? So, oh, um, well, sir, for discussion, um, the last the grandstand project was in the in the hands of the executive committee. That project um, going through that. I, I don't know if the, the you know the board can decide whether they want to keep it in the exec committee or possibly move it to public works. Um, public safety committee. It'd be up to the board if they want to choose to change that direction. But otherwise, the um, executive committee was the original committee assigned to do the uh, grandstand project. Should Councilor, should we take it to the executive committee at the next meeting to see if they want to advocate to the public protection? A couple of things. I don't know that you need to wait. I think you could 
today, based upon what's on the agenda, simply move that to public safety, public works. The rationale behind it is twofold. One, the executive committee has a kind of a history now of, you know, maybe some, yeah, bad, bad blood or just, it, there was, it wasn't always positive. Plus, public safety, public works deals with big projects, the, you know, the new highway shop, the building remodel, so that that's kind of in their okay. wheelhouse. And so, um, then, all right, it might make sense. Then, to just... In other words, then I would entertain a motion uh, that the Fair Society negotiations from here on would be assigned to the Public Protection and Public Works Committee. Would that be an appropriate motion for somebody to make? Yes, for purposes of the grandstand. Yes. Mr. Chair, I would move that the grandstand issue be in charge, move to the Public Safety Public Communication Committee. Second. Got a second from Amy. Any discussion on that? I'll have some after, Mr. Chair, for the next. I'm sorry? For, well, there's a, there's a couple <laughs> things in the agreement that we should address as we go through. This is one, who's gonna do it now? But when you we're, done, he's got more when we're done with this one, I got oh, another okay. one to talk about. Well, let's move on this one. The negotiate from the grandstand, all in favor of that, signal by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, opposed? Any sign? <laughs> Hearing none. Are there more uh, more issues in the Fair Society MOU and our negotiations in good faith with them to uh, move forward with a with the uh, fair and uh, the management of the pro our property there? Go ahead, Steve. Uh, well, one of the things, you know, we agreed to in here is to give them an outlet where they can come and tell us what they've done, talk to what they want to do. Okay. We never really determine what that outlet is. So is it going to be a committee? If so, what committee? Or is it going to be county board where they come and provide this information to the entire board? One of the things we need to iron out where they're going to bring their information to us. Now, if Public Works is taking over the grandstand, I would imagine that would be a good place then for them to report for their you know, progress on buildings and stuff because it's all, it's all tied in. I kind of... Mr. Chair, I, 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 I think that <laughs> what we got to interject here is I think our administrator has to be kind of the lead person you know in, in, in fire presentation of the county side uh well i think <clears throat> well i don't know i i would assume that the county board a committee would be in direct contact with the uh Fair Society and their <clears throat> their leaders, uh, hopefully to bring them to a county board meeting on some <clears throat> regular pre-designated time to present their uh, <clears throat> progress or their their interests and uh, or concerns. Uh, I think we should establish a, and I think Steve can do that with negotiating uh, with them yet. Uh, while he's still assigned to the uh, representative. Go ahead, Ryan. I just want to ask a question. <clears throat> this isn't insinuating, it's what we should do, but isn't it likely that if the Fair Society was to present to a committee, that eventually that committee is then going to present to the full board or pass that information along? Can we just cut <clears throat> out that step and have them come to the board directly? Can I respond to that, Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Because one thing that we talked about when we were in our little work group with me and Steve and I, they said we would really like to just kind of have a, a monthly touchstone with somebody. And first they said the full board. And we said, well, that might be a little ambitious for our agendas. But 
they really, the, the spirit of this started where to kind of keep the lines of communication, make sure things don't spin out of control with a miscommunication on something and tighten up that bond. So that's the intent. And so I think at a committee level makes the most sense, but it wasn't necessarily to also beat through the negotiations piece. It's kind of two pieces here. There's the negotiations piece, but then there's the ongoing tightening up of that communication, right? Well, I, that's I what think, I meant, Amy. I think we've already established the fact that Steve will, will be meeting with them on a monthly basis until April, at least, until uh, you either quit or get a new, another uh, representative. And I think that they, they should, that uh, he should negotiate with them as to a time, let us know, and we can put them on the agenda so they can make their presentation. I think that's what they want. I don't think anything scheduled is appropriate at this time. And uh, I think just to keep things smooth and uh, going along fine, I think that would be that would be a, a move that Steve could handle without any problems or action at this time in reference to their communication or contact with us. I have a Go ahead. statement. Just shouldn't they report? Just like I mean, we we do have some policies, <clears throat> so they probably should report to a committee, so that they do follow these policies. We have purchasing policies, everything else. That's been the problem with with the fair a little bit. So, like Steve said, I mean, if they could come every month and say, "Okay, here's our capital improvement plan," anything else, it should go through a committee and be approved. Also, I think in a, in a if they know that committee meets once a month, <clears throat> if they have anything or any disputes, they could show up at that meeting and air their differences or whatever. Well, I think they I should think the be outside in. committees, any other ones have a committee that they they go to. I think they could be invited. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. right. What would you want to go first? Or? You go first. I'm, I'm trying this memorandum of understanding. I'm trying to skim through it and be involved. And that's a little difficult for me, but it says right here under 7.4, it says all notices correspond to be sent under this agreement shall be sent to the following addresses. And it says the public works division, uh, division director. Well, I'm sorry, but under this change we've had, is that Josh or who is the? Uh, that'll be my reporter, but it's going to be Mr. Polk, Rod Polk. Okay. That position. And that was one of my comments is, is that um, the day-to-day -day operations of the fair and contact with the county is going to go through um, myself and Rod naturally with public works for facilities and what they're doing out there. I think their their intent on coming to the board is we now receive we're receiving <coughs> quarterly reports for their financials that we can get to in front of the committees. Um, but the committee would not be the spot for them to dispute something. I think that would be first coming through us. I think it's more of a communication tool for them to get in front of the committee to say uh, during this quarter or couple month period, um, we had these volunteer organizations help out on the fairgrounds. Um, they did this project, put in this handicap ramp or did something like that. Um, but I think that's the kind of connection. So they they have more of a presence here. It's just not once a year at the committee on asking for funding. Do you want to invite them to our public protection meeting or a representative of them to, <laughs> to the yeah. meeting so that they're aware of our next meeting on, in uh, January? You invite them. We can uh, discuss that with them at that time. I think that'll resolve it so that we're not guessing what they might want to do or what they might not want to do. Okay, go ahead. So the last piece is a communication tool to make sure that when a request is put in from them or from us for that matter, that it's documented, communicated to Rod through, what's the name of that? Fresh, Fresh Service. Fresh Service. Fresh Service is a program the county uses when somebody needs something, they go on there they put what they need. Okay. You know, uh, the, only, the only thing, then we can defuse something that happens 
that's not covered by any funding from the county. So yeah. it can be communicated very clearly. Currently, uh, they decide they're gonna upgrade the lights in the buildings. Yeah. So they go ahead and just do it. Then they send a bill. Right. Well, that's capital improvement and we didn't have the money. So this tool should help a lot with the communication. And Rod and I have talked briefly about it, but you know, he'll just have a list. You know, if it's during the fair, of course, I'll run down and fix whatever has to be fixed. But he'll have a list, an ongoing list when the guys are in the area down there, they can swing in and put a new flush valve in, or they can do, you know, a light switch or something that needs to be done. Uh, because they've requested it on this press service thing. So well, that's, that's some... another tool that should help our communication. Level Absolutely. A lot more. Absolutely. I think you've already communicated that to them to some degree. I think they're aware of what we're requiring. I yeah. think this is something that we can clarify at the meeting with them that uh, Mo will invite them to in January. Yeah, I haven't showed them that yet. Mo and I just talked about how can we have a form that communicates, you know, so we're going to start a, a database and a form so that everyone would have a number on it. Everyone would be put in the database so they can't say, or we can't say, you didn't tell us that, or they can't say, well, you didn't nope. fix that. So this fresh start thing is much better than just having a form. Sure. So and there's it nothing. Work out. And I can see nothing wrong with having them present at the time we present that. In fact, probably be, eventually we got to let them know. Yeah. So that's a good idea. Good. I'm done now. <laughs> well, you're not excused, but you can. Done. <laughs> so if. Uh, so pretty much it's by county policy <laughs> is what we're trying to do. Pretty much. That's, that's our, kind of what know, we're trying to get. I want to, I want a motion. I think we should. Uh, Accept this MOU as presented and signed. Uh, would that be right, Councilor? It's already executed. Yes. You can't back out of it now, so you can vote, but it won't, won't mean anything. So I need a motion to accept the. <laughs> no, don't. We don't. No, we don't. I'll well, just don't. accept no, it. No. I would prefer... It's done. It's, it's done. good. Uh, so we just accepted it, and they don't know how many of us are. Yeah, I understand there's two people Same in there thing. that are approved. Is there need an offer they accepted? That's it. Was there any objection to the accepting <laughs> of this particular document by any member of the county board? I'll plead the fifth. I'm not saying a damn thing. We don't have to vote. I, you don't have to vote. Don't but get I, just, that I want to let them know that we are yeah. united in our efforts somehow. Consensus. All right. General consensus is. There you go. Automatically approved. Okay, now confirmation of appointment. I, by I the just want to say, I just want to say thank you <coughs> to you, Steve. Say what? I want to say thank you to Steve for um, walking through so much of this. Well, they, they've had yeah. some real headaches. There's no doubt about it. And I want to say thank you. Believe me, I know because it's like walking through a dog's We heard through. from it's them on a regular yeah. basis. But they did a great job. Okay, confirmation and appointment made by the county <coughs> board chairman. Uh, CJ has got his has conflict with the uh, CJCC time element. It's just about impossible for him to make it, and so he's uh, agreed to have someone else replace him on that uh, on that committee. And at least until April. So I volunteered to do that. And if there isn't any objection, I think we'd need an approval by the county board to uh, appoint if CJ agrees 100%, I believe. Yes. Okay. So he, he concedes. So uh, I need. Uh, motion to accept me as the uh, replacement to the CJCC meeting to fill out the term until April. I move that uh, J. Luke uh, succeeds me in uh, representing the county in the CJCC through April of 2024. Second. 
Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. That's okay, it passed. All right. <laughs> That's the only appointment I had. County Administrator, do you have some uh, appointments to make as, as reference appointment, at least the highway commissioner? I do have I do have one that needs confirmation from the county board, and that is the appointment of the highway commissioner. I'm very proud to the appointment for Josh Kelch um, for that position of highway commissioner. Uh, as you know, Josh Kelch worked for us for 17 years, 18 years, 2005 to last year, then went to Bernard County to be their highway commissioner. And we were lucky to get him back, back home in, in Polk County. So he is my appointment for highway commissioner. Uh, so I do need that one confirmed by the county board. Motion to approve. Wait, oh. sorry. Um, so if you don't mirror the term that uh, Mr. Norby had when he was highway commissioner, which was an indefinite term, so um, then it would only be for two years and you would have to revisit this appointment every two years. So I'm just suggesting if you would like to make the motion to have the term mirror the same term as the predecessor, that way you don't have to come back every two years to reappoint. He still serves at the pleasure of the administrator, so... You know, if there's issues, which I don't anticipate <coughs> handled, but it would prevent this board from having to address it every two years. Steve, you have that down, Shabana? Oh, I do. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that that would be my motion then to mirror Mo Narby's term and appoint Josh Kelch Highway Commissioner. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion about that? All in favor signified by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Opposed. Any same sign? That's fine. No opposition. And that is starting January 1. January 1st. Okay. Well, you got a lot of work to do, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, I have everything that I have to report has been pretty thoroughly discussed. <laughs> so, Administrator, do you have anything to report? Yes. Uh, just a short report here. Um, it's day 13. So, soaking up a lot of stuff. Uh, also, um, Rod Polk has been uh, taking on the, uh, hired on as the public works director. So recycling and solid waste now come underneath him also. So he's taking over that, um, that role. Sarah McCurdy uh, is our new environmental services director. She worked with the county previously. So welcoming her back is fantastic. Tony Nowak is, is coming from Greenville, Wisconsin. He's gonna be our parks and trails supervisor. He's moving up from there with 20 years experience running the apartments down there. So he starts uh, January 1st also. So we're very glad to get those um, talented people elevated. Um, also, there is a resolution coming to the general government direct uh, government committee it's a budget amendment uh, and our current county surveyor is leaving the county at the end of the year. And we started the hiring practice and found out that it was only uh, through the budget process, it was only budgeted at a 0.75 uh, FTE and it should be a full-time FTE. So that budget, that amendment will be coming through the general government then to the county board to reestablish that position as a, a full one. FTE, so that'll be coming shortly. Back to where it was. Back to where it was, correct, um, on that one. So, and that's really all I have for my report right now. Okay. So, I have a question. Yes. Um, how are we for staffing? How's our staffing level? How are the vacancies and the hiring process? Um, I'm going to defer to Don on that because I'm not up to date on the last. Yeah, my understanding is we have 16 positions uh, active right now, or did as of yesterday, the day before. And we have some notable improvements in some areas, we believe. Um, we do believe some of that is at least in part due to socialization and marketing of the uh, new minimums for some of our roles. So we thank the board for that. Thank you. Any other questions? And supervisor has anything they'd like to report from any meetings? John? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to have it in the, in the minute. It kind of happened in between the board meetings 
and uh, uh, Dr. O'Connell, uh, father passed away, and on uh, behalf of our county board, I'd like to have the deputy uh, to recognize uh, condolences for Supervisor O'Connell. Wish you and your family the best. Great man. Thank you, John. Lucky sure. enough to know him to be there. Sure, Kim appreciates that. We all certainly offer our condolences. There's no question about that. How is the, we'll all see it if you haven't already. One of eight? You one of the eight? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other reports, information we need? I have one. Go ahead. I, Gen Gov and HHS have already heard it, so some people are probably getting sick of it, but I'm going <laughs> to ring the bell whenever I can. Uh, we had, because uh, this is, it, it'll, it'll affect county schools, uh, possibly, because a lot of the schools that we have already require a personal finance course for graduation. Um, but in my professional work, we got a bill passed in Wisconsin that's going to require uh, statewide one semester of personal financial literacy um, for graduation. So number one, hopefully the long-term upside for the county is that we just start having some very good financial stewards within our community uh, coming up and making good financial choices as they become adults. And then number two, if the schools don't already require it or um, are gonna need additional staffing or training or anything like that, uh, the state is starting to put together all their resources and everything through companies like the one that I work for to get their teachers trained up and everything in case they have any staffing shortages or needs to implement one more graduation requirement, which isn't everybody's favorite thing. But at the end of the day, we thought having kids be smart with their money was something that was worth fighting for. So we got that passed and looking forward to helping out. It's a good, good program. No question about that. Mr. Chair, go ahead. Uh, I um, <clears throat> I just have a um, something quick to say about um, the HS uh, Health and Human Services meeting. I'd like to thank uh, the health department and the sheriff's department. Um, a couple of the things um, I'd mentioned uh, selling alcohol to underage uh, drinkers and uh, our underage people, and um, here's a press release. For 34% of the checked establishments were found to be selling un underage people. Can't remember what the actual number was. 13 instances. 13, what, what was the total that you, you guys checked? 38. 38, 38 13 out of 38. So um, this is one of the this is one of the many tools that we have, right? Where we're combining our, our forces, resources. And then using, a, a, I like to think that better than a press release and that peer pressure and that negative press that this, this would bring those people. But um, I, I feel like uh, there's not a whole lot of meat behind it uh, because they ended up, they end up charging the person who actually sells the alcohol rather than the establishment. And then um, out of 57, um, Tobacco checks, uh, we had three sales. So faring much better. Um, and then using uh, using our resources uh, to help prevent and just to keep it in the front uh, so that people aren't going at it with blinders on. Thank you very much. Appreci I appreciate it. Thank you for adjournment and wish everybody uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. Thank you. Good luck, 2024. <coughs> motion to adjourn. All in favor? All right. Done. Get her done. Get her done. Very good. Yeah. Yeah.